Hey ladies and gentlemen, Nablime and I are here to bring you some of the Gauntlet qualification matches from Gauntlet A of Acropolis number one. Bit of a mouthful, we're working on it. What's going on Nablime? how you doing? I am doing great. I'm pretty excited because I'm pretty sure this is the first Gauntlet I've cast, right? Yeah, Without that's any correct. In fact, wait, how much of Gauntlet have you cast? This so far, the, this gauntlet, I've probably cast, uh, I don't know, like a quarter of the opening round and stuff. So not not much at the end of the day. I, I was committing for sure to cast the qualification matches, and that's what we're here to do. Uh, and maybe I'll be able to work my way back and see some of the hype ones. There's some matchups that I know were really good and back and forth uh, earlier in the tournament. Uh, some of the matchups like uh, Benno versus the Beaver and, and Benno versus Taco Cake and stuff like that. And, and there might even be like a series where... You know, maybe if we're for all of the players who qualified, it would be worth casting the matches that they had played earlier, right? To be like, I mean, this is how this guy got here or whatever, especially if he's a newcomer. But for now, this is what I, I've conf I'm i definitely confirmed to doing and doing it with you, thankfully. I appreciate you deciding to come on in and help cast these uh, gauntlet qualifiers. You're obviously going to be in the main tournament. You're already in the battlements yes. section as the champion who has reigned on from high from Ascension number seven. So you want to check out the competition, I'm sure. Definitely. Uh, I'm kind of sad that if I don't get eliminated, which I don't think I will from the tournament, I won't be able to cast any of it. I know. Too busy yeah. Playing. But yeah, it's been pretty uh, cutthroat in the in the gauntlet. I have to say, I said this last ascension that like the level of competition increased a lot, but I think it's increased even more because I'm looking at right. people in the gauntlet and I'm like, holy shit, should I be worried? You know, some of the people <laughs> right. coming up are quite intimidating and that's to say nothing of gauntlet B. That's right, and Gauntlet B will be the some of the strong names from Gauntlet A that didn't make it through because only four will make it through here. Plus some of the new signups, we've had uh, a couple of people, including uh, Top Ramen over there, as well as uh, who's the other one? Grunch, the brother of Urban. Maybe that means Urban himself Dude, will sign up. Like, what's there's... up with Top Ramen? Right, I yeah. haven't seen him play, but you know he plays some games against Hamster and Hapsaya. It's like all close at the game, yeah. and Hapsaya, right? And yeah. it's like he's like third day on on the project, and it's like wait, wait, what? Is yeah, this a new challenger appears, right? So we needed those Terran players and they're starting to come out. Speaking yeah, of, that's right. in this series that we're about to take a look at here, which will open up on Fata Morgana, a map by Vic7, we've got Newt as Terran taking on his old friend Three Crow, the cheesiest Protoss we have in the gauntlet, made his way in nice and easy to the upper bracket. So this is where we find ourselves. And I think if we were going to ask ourselves predictions, we'd both have to comfortably say that Newt should take this. In fact, it's almost well, a bit of a proving ground because even though Three Crow has been improving himself, if Newt really is that serious class one player, that sovereign class player that he's recently earned the rank of, he probably should take this kind of convincingly, right? Do you have the uh, bracket up on screen as it is before we cast this? I do not, but I will. Well, that's all right. Them. I'll just describe what happened. Sure, so, yeah. I First off about Newt, right? He did not play the last Ascension. He was not around. Um, so he's been around, but he's definitely played plenty. And I have to say, I think he's the most likely person to defeat me oh. and take the championship, okay. honestly. If anyone is, you know, I'm, I might just win. I'm not going to discount that possibility. Well, this um, is funny because you did say, you did mention a while ago, for people who don't know, you had a really good prediction of saying that the only player in Ascension 7 you were worried about at the time was Hamster, who made it all yeah. the way to second place and took you yeah, to and all, all the games, it right? The we had, possible series, right? Right, yeah. It was a four for three. And in very narrow yeah. fashion, did he not manage to get it over the line? So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, by the the last game, I remember was one-sided, but, like, the game he could have won on, you know, the match point, the first match point, I I guess, was like super close, right? Yes, he was yeah. like ling all me and this stuff. So yeah. yeah, well, yeah, give me credit that I'm going to predict exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, um, there it is. Just saying. Yeah, so Newt seems extremely strong. Um, you know, he is willing to try out different stuff uh, and he has a good grasp of like, mm. I think the fundamentals of brood war and what's effective and what isn't with the units we have. So he's a very threatening player. Now, if we look at the bracket so far, Actually, right. first about three crow. Obviously, he's been in the project for a lot longer. Uh, Fair but, enough. Yeah. You know, sort of cartoonishly, what I like to say about um, Cosmonarchy, there's kind of two types of player. All right, there's people who make workers and people who don't. Okay. And I have to say, three crow is a person who doesn't. So sure. he can use all the little tricks and tactics. He has the knowledge for sure because he's very familiar with the project. But if he gets into a long game, he is not going to have the macro to keep up. I think. But he may prove me wrong. He may show me something different here. So. The actual results, right? First off, three crow two o General Anakin, which uh, General Anakin we can probably talk about at a different time, but uh, he's been surprisingly effective. So not an easy opponent at all. But it shows three crows in form. They need two o Benno, which I was very surprised about because mm, yes. I always say Benno is sort of like 
a tier 1.5 player, you know, he's very good uh, for a class 2. I think he's improved a lot and he has pretty solid macro. I'm putting him in the making worker category, so I think he's actually pretty good. Sure, so 2-0, yeah. very strong result for 3 Crow. So maybe have to, like I was saying, reconsider where 3 Crow is. Um, and Newt was seeded straight into the upper match, which I think is fair because, you know, we've been playing a lot of games and I think it's positive win rate. That's right. 2-0, dead infested. Now, uh, I don't think we can glean that much from that, though, because, uh, you know, if we have to pick favorites, I have to say, I don't think Dead Infested is favored to qualify here. Mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't drop a match to someone who, again, is more knowledgeable about the project, so shows he's in shape. This is the worst real test we're going to see. That's right, yeah. Newt has the favored seed. He was the uppermost seeded player, seed number one going into it, and since we had an uneven number of players, he did not end up needing an opening match. So that is why he was seeded directly with a bit of a buy in the first round. And that means, yeah, you're right. His only real competition is going to be Three Crow, and we are about to initiate that uh, that little countdown there if you're ready to see what happens in this very Let's first match. All right. Well, Fata Morgana is a map. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the veto in the meanwhile. Newt, with the upper yes. seed, was able to ban two maps, and Three Crow, meanwhile, went around, around and picked the starter instead. Do I have to set the latency? I can't do it. I just tried. I have to uh, set in latency Brutal. in replay. Yeah, in Brood, where I have to do it all the time, so you probably should. I tried to do it. It didn't work. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't work. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> How are we going to do this? this? This is impossible. Surely mm -hmm. surely this is some fr prank April Fool's movement. Uh, do you want me to go on disc? Well, enough about that uh, silly technical doohickey. Computers were a mistake, but Newt is I in the top left. Three Crows in the top right. Australian on the cast. I know, yeah. Ooh. Listen, so, it, yeah, about... Go ahead. Sorry, you go. No, no, no. You were about talking about Newt, right? right? Okay. Uh, yeah, we were just talking about a pick then, right? So I'm going to put the TVP hat back on because I was definitely thinking about this a lot in Ascension, right? Okay. Um, I think it's a good pick for three crow because generally the closer Protoss is, the more they sort of bully Terran in the early game. Newt banned Axiom, which I'm quite surprised about because I think it's quite a defensible map. It has pretty easy to defend expansions for um, Terran. Mm. And Newt also banned Sideshow, which I think is an excellent ban, because uh, I made my thoughts known in the last session. Yes, sure, yeah. It's extremely difficult for Terra to do anything, because you can't get across the map and pressure Protoss in any way, so they can sort of do what they want. Uh, and 3 Crow here banned Terra Lit, uh, which I can sort of see, because again, it's very defensible for Terran. That's right. Um, so we're starting on Fader here, which again, I think is a good pick for 3 Crow. Let's see what his plan is. Now, already going down with two gates, 3 uh, Crow obviously known for like aggression and cheese and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see two gates come out right in the back, but you wouldn't call this a cheese, just a, a strong powering opener. Yeah, yeah, it's more of like a military-focused opener here. And as the game progresses, something that you mentioned about Three Crow is that maybe he's one of the players that doesn't make workers. Uh, and and the, the, the glibness of that statement isn't really lost, though. It, it is maybe true, uh, or at least on the truer side, more so than Three Crow would like it to uh, be. You'll have to show me otherwise, you know? You right. can say, like, oh, Nebline, you shouldn't say that about me, like... I can do it. Well, you just got to prove it to me. No problem. That's right. You know, so far, so good on the macro. And like I said, with his results so far, maybe he's he's stronger than I thought. Now, he's hunting around for that scout. I guess it must have lost no. him. And that was means he looking for the anchor floating or the stockade floating? Or was he really just looking for the mason? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Something there just to see if there was a proxy. Because, you know, this is a pretty small distance. If you put your first stockade over here. Oh, it's here, happened many a time. I've done over, it myself. Right? Okay. You float so... it in, you start making hurricanes, you can yeah. win the game pretty quickly, you know? I yeah. mean, I guess with the new hurricane, it's not as easy to just depower everything. And we'll never see that strategy come to fruition. Uh, I don't know if you remember on Nitro, that one game against Veek. I tried to do that where I was going to run in with like a Harakon and a Maverick before he had anything to deep power his gateways. Yeah, the eight stockade the, or six stockade yeah. or whatever, right? <laughs> it would have been beautiful, man, but you had to ruin my fun. Listen, anyway, so we have. Listen. Yeah. They, work, they work out, I think. You just can't build yeah, only yeah, Harakans, that's all. Shambler has so this crazy fine. idea where you have to make three Harakans for every Maverick, and I feel like that's really undervaluing the Maverick. Well, that sounds you know, fun. It does sound so, pretty fun. Newt favoring the Vultures here, and he does this against me as Zerg as well. I think he likes getting the sort of map control out. Mm. Uh, and something that's really good about these Vultures is they deny scouts completely. Um, that's Fair really enough. the strongest thing here. Obviously, when it comes to later combat, they don't help up that well, and they're reasonably expensive. And you know what? Those mines really not getting anything done for Newt. He just sees, like, there's a few Dracodins, which is probably not a surprise. <laughs> That's right. And another thing to point out, too, is that with Cosmonarchy having its vision updated way faster than StarCraft 1 by default, the mines only give you very, very quick connections. You have to be pretty on the ball to click and actually see what units are there. But 
Yeah. Despite that, Ooh. I do feel like, okay, Ooh. Newt might be able to deal with that. Now, there is a rogue gallery coming. Do you reckon that maybe Three Crow is going to try to use the new bar guest that provides that armor yeah. penetration? I think it's quite likely. You know, it's definitely an option here that you make a bunch of zealots and a few cabalists and you sort of rush in and kill everything. That's another tier. I, I suspect with his commitment to Dracodins and how much gas does he mine? Can you check his gas workers for me? Sure, yeah. Only the two, it uh, looks like. Maybe he will get Cabalists and or Charlatans, maybe, um, right away. Sorry, Vagrants, I mean, um, right away just to get the damage. Because I would have said, if you're going for the Barghest, you're going to need more Dracodins as well and, like, just gas in general, right? Because mm. I think one scribe per um, gateway can produce constant Dracodins, but he doesn't really have enough. And look at that. The turret scout coming in. Very nice move there. I oh, my God. Well, listen, the second, the second mine connects onto three vultures, so that's a little bit of a rain on Newt's parade. He is going to end up losing his vultures here. Uh, and maybe the more, the maybe more at this point, you know? I think if he loses everything but the Goliaths, he's still winning here. Well, if he loses one Goliath, not much micro from Newt there, to be honest. I know, yeah. Uh, and Pico tries, but fails. <laughs> it doesn't quite get away. Right. But I think it's still a pretty good trade for um, Newt there, because he only lost vultures and one Goliath and one Cyclops, so he's not losing that many of those gas units. There you go. I think, I think a pretty good outcome, but yeah, a bit of a missed micro getting that second one, but we might hit your own units. Unfortunately, it happens a lot to Newt, I've noticed. You have to use them very, very precisely. I would say, unlike spider mines, but no, spider mines actually, you would have just lost your whole army, so never mind. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Well, we do see a couple of replacement vultures being queued up over here, and it looks like, what, what is it going to be? Another quarry for this treasury, adding a stockade likely for clerics. And something that I know Three Crow has bemoaned in the past is the Goliath Cleric and the way that it is powerful. But you usually can't really counter that, at least to my knowledge, using the Rogue Gallery, right? If you're going to go up against well, the Goliath Cleric, you maybe want, as a bit of a reach for something that we don't see very often, you might look, look at uh, Psy Storm from the Cantavis. But the most common counter seems to be using a Cantors or Uptectons to deal that splash. Maybe Architects in a pinch, but you can still kind of fight that with Goliath Cleric, which is pretty interesting. I would say uh, Cantors are definitely very strong against yes. it, but there was a couple of considerations with the Rogue Gallery here, you know. Bark has struck it and he's going to give you some mileage, or he's running right in again. But yep. once again, you're not really very tactically positioning these mines, because now Rico, well, he doesn't seem to care. Oh no. Said, no. Ooh. Actually, teleporting in was actually beneficial for 3 Crow there because he absorbed that mine. Now, new push back up into the high ground. Can he hold here? That Cabalus is still alive. Gonna come in and get a couple more hits for it and take it out. It does a lot of damage. And that second Goliath almost ready to go down. The Masons are finally here and they will do good damage to those Dracodins, but so much damage has been done. It looks like 3 Crow's gonna retreat, but that was a severe blow. It was, yeah, but the problem is I'm already looking at the worker count running away here, oh. away from 3 Crow. You know. The last cast we did, I think I harped on it a bit much, and I don't want to do it, but look, man, that's what the game's about, fundamentally. Um, if you don't get the money, you can't make the army, and if you don't have the army, you die, so... Yeah, yeah. Free Crow, I think, tactically playing well, um, and maybe I'd even put it a different way, that you're not really showing very much tenacity or technique, even, really, in this defense. He's mm. sort of just putting stuff out there and hoping it's enough, and Free Crow, you know, using that a little bit, um, but... What might have been a slight advantage is in fact a severe disadvantage because at home, Fuka is not doing what he needs to do. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much accurate here. Down 20 workers by the deficit, going to be adding some lattices to the menu here to see what other content he can serve up for Newt's army. And yeah, he's definitely, I think one of the things that we're seeing out of this build order here from Newt, where he has gone for the one Fulcrum Vulture push into Quarry, into a second Fulcrum eventually, does mean that he is weak in the army scaling at the first bit. And if you can push him, if you do have the wherewithal to take the aggression to your opponent as the Protoss here, you will have that momentum favoring you. The question is, what happens next? And if you don't have the macro backbone, it, it kind of feels like Ooh. you're put on a bit of a timer here. That's a lot of Dracodins, man. Uh, if the mines don't do too much, that's actually a deadly force here because there's not that much Terran stuff. Yeah, again, and just what I was saying, right? You got to watch out for that. Now, first Cabal is going to dive on in, gets one connection. Second one finishes off, though low HP Goliath on the front. Now we do have another one getting a couple of really good connections there. Only two Goliaths are going to remain, and there's plenty of Dracodins here in a blind. Yeah, and, and the Cabal's not really cost efficient, but they do do a lot of sudden burst damage, which is great against this healing. And like I said, it's just a really high number of Dracodins. Uh, because of the trades before, perhaps, Newt not really quite the force, but the Mason pool and the high ground is going to absolutely decimate this. Narakan doing his best, but I think he might have accidentally attacked his own units, I'm not even sure. <laughs> uh, but he does fend it off, he does fend it off. That's right. Uh, and, you know, that reset Three Crows army again. And normally I would say, you know, uh, if the army's reset, that favors Protoss, but in this case, because of so many more workers for Newt, he can actually just keep trading, and he realizes he has the strength now, he's on the offensive. Um, 
And I'm not sure how 3 can hold this, actually. He has the buildings he needs, but he's making Sims, which I'm going to do nothing against Goliath. You can clone him three times, they're still not going to care. Uh, but look, he's going to get one there. But you need a huge number to deal with this uh, Goliath cleric coming out. This is a free Goliath, though. It is a free Goliath. Yeah, Nude a little bit sloppy here, but the first Kabbalist and only Kabbalist right now are going to charge in and only get a couple of connections onto that Haraka and eventually will end up falling. The Goliaths and the Clerics are going to do their best to stay themselves alive. The, some of the units getting caught a little bit here by the, mm. the bridge, so it looks like Newt's a little bit of a flounder as he tries to push on forward, but he does have some reinforcements coming out here. So far, oh, the, the Sims have really been only good at kind of like absorbing very, very minimal amounts of, of Goliath shots here when they that get to that ball, can right? End up getting like three kills if it just gets the right hit at the right time, you know? Yeah. Um, Assisting three kills, I mean. Yeah, this isn't quite enough for Newt. I'd really like to see him rather just take like a good concave and keep reinforcing here, but Draco is going to step forward with the cannons. <laughs> a couple more Dracodons fall, and uh, Newt already setting up a third base here. His plan is very simple, very straightforward. It's working so far. And we have an Ancestral Archives on the way, though. That objective one, like you say, could be absolutely crucial. Just one on the high ground completely shut this down. Pushing back in, though. The, that uh, Harakan getting plenty of free hits thanks to the Clerics oh, not the being focused down. down. Here. Why yep. is it down here? That's the idea that Three Crow had, I guess, is to put it down as soon as soon as he could. But this looks like a death push, and we don't really have that much production here. The Uptecton only now started about 45 seconds out now, and this focus fire is not going to be enough. Oh, He's only now starting clerics. to thin the herd of the clerics, and they're really getting up to that fast number. If that's an Archon and it could finish, it could probably hold, but if it's an Uptecton, I think this game's over. Yeah, I don't see this happening, man. I think Newt's got it. I think he's just bulldozed him. Yep, evacuating what minimal workers were made at that second site, and the Ancestral Archives is going to fall. Pretty much the nail in the coffin here, but 3Crow's the kind of guy who gives you plenty of time to update the scoreboard before uh, <laughs> before the, the GG comes Very out. Very kind you know? of him. Yeah. Very kind of him. So we should mention as well, by the way, these qualifiers are best of five. That's right. Uh, where the other Gauntlet games were best of three, so... In fact, in a way, you have more sort of forgiveness than in group stage, where it's just going to be a series of best of ones. Yeah, that's right. I mean, best of fives are almost uh, a little bit of a, a preview to the throne room stage where all of the matches, except for the final uh -huh. one, is best of seven. And yeah, Three Crow going to go ahead and say, stupid yeah. good, GG. <laughs> Sorry, Caps. <laughs> I, had to, I had to yell it. Sorry. There we go. There we go. All right. So Newt yeah. is going to go ahead and confirm that... Uh, he is indeed the guy in the lead. Now, I will say that was a little bit awkward in the early round, if you think about it, because Streetcrow definitely had some legs there. But falling down on the macro is the big deal, the big story. Sure, he had some deficit with workers that was unavoidable because of the quarries, but not that much. It doesn't explain, you know, having 20 workers down in not that much time, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I think I might have asked mute before, but I've forgotten what his background is, but I assume StarCraft 2 and, and or Brood War. Brood War, yeah, Brood War. Yeah, so. it is Brood War, yeah. Yep. Um, I think it's why he's a good player, though, and why generally some players are better than others, is because uh, you have the priorities, you know what's actually important. Um, and yeah, he was not focusing on the tactical side, but that is the less important side in the end. Um, but Thruko definitely showing that there's weaknesses to be exploited. Um, on that note, I'd also say Thruko's sort of plan there wasn't very refined. He didn't have a very uh, precise, like, you know, proportion of units he's going to use. Mm. And if he's relying on a sort of tactical victory, I feel like he needs, like, a very technical approach and a very, like, well-practiced approach. So, I don't know. I'm getting nervous for him. That was his pick. That's right. And it was a little shaky for Newt, but generally a pretty straightforward win. Like, it didn't really look like Newt was going to lose. Yeah, there was a couple of chances, and that was pretty much it. So, hey, we're going on to Impetus, which was apparently selected second by Three Crow. Let's see what happens as we get on into it. This time around, Nablime will not be joining me in the initial countdown because we have ascertained that uh, Latin Yeah, no, I was work, totally so. witness for the last one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like... So, mm -hmm. Through the power of movie magic. Well, Three Crows in the bottom left, <laughs> nuded in the top right. Now, Impetus is a map that, even though it has similar spawn locations to Axiom, it plays very differently. Now, I think yes. that this map is kind of... It's a weird th thing to say, but I feel like there are concerns, no matter what race you are, for the opening two bases. That's my thinking. 
I don't know if you kind of agree with the way that impetus plays out, but I feel like, you know, the distance between the, the main and the natural is a pain point for Zerg. The fact that the cliff is kind of there, but not all the way is a bit of a pain point for Terran, since they do rely on that range advantage when fighting, for example, Drakid and heavy armies. And then for Protoss, it, it feels like the uh, drop distance over here, uh, the, the surface area that uh, you don't normally have any ground units on the path on the way to guard, can make it pretty risky versus Terran uh, or even versus Zerg when drops start to become a little bit more popular for them too. So uh, that, that's sort of some initial things to point out. I'm not sure if Three Crow will end up uh, going for drops himself because obviously that's a point that technically applies to all the races, but it feels like as Protoss, you can end up losing your, your pylons a lot faster than some of the others. We have a, a manor oh, pylon man. right behind the ministry. So that's a little bit of a like this move, man. He's not gonna get anything out of this. Uh, okay, how does the map work out? if? if Five masons pull and you cancel it. Okay, it's not worth it. By the way, <laughs> no. Cancel 70, it. Seventy-five. Oh. I feel like Newt is actually even making a mistake pulling this much. Like, it's still not a good move for three crow. But if he only just put like one mason on the scribe, one mason on the pylon, and then if he starts making wardens, then you pull a bunch. Yeah. I think he would be way more ahead. But as it is, like three crow's just throwing away minerals here, man. Just trying to throw it off. I don't know. Yeah, that, that those uh, those are 150 minerals. That could have been a second gateway, and he would have been in yeah. a similar position to where he was at last time. Well, he's going to keep this vulture back, actually, which again I think is a mistake from you, actually. Uh, maybe it'll let him get out on the map without any fear of mines a bit more. Could no, be, could yet. be the question, but the Draconin isn't ready yet. Second it's gateway now way. started. I think it's a proven opening for Protoss generally. I mean, you can try and expand it one gate. Look, about what you were saying about the natural, I think a close ramp actually helped Protoss the most because of Draconins. Uh, it's quite easy to micro up and down the ramp, get your shields back over and over, trying to defend a naked Nexus. Uh, it's very hard to actually deal with that unless you have enough force to just kill the opposing player completely, right? Um, but like, I, I think you're right that the map is not super defensible, but I also think that's quite good for Protoss because if you look at it, it's quite easy to move your army around different open areas. And the third in particular is not super defensible. And Terran tends to benefit from super totally expansions. Yeah, fair enough. The thing I'm, I am a little bit worried about is that we do have a star pad Ooh. completing over here for Newt. And so he will be yeah. looking to drop. Now that mine being allowed to go down despite the dragon and being up for the whole time does mean that the Zealot takes a little while before it can make any connections. But hey, the vultures stay alive. We do have a Trojan starting immediately. If the vultures can come back in and maybe lay a couple of mines or distract as this nexus is going down, this could actually be a, a, a nasty little cyclops drop being prepared over here. Yeah. He's gonna have three of them. Yeah, and uh, three could no way to scout this, right? Because uh, his scribe got pushed out, of course, or left actually before right. long before that could go down. No embassy coming up. Uh, although I think the best you could hope for here is a witness going along the uh, like flight path. So yeah, I feel like he's gonna get blindsided, but he's gonna try in reaction time. Um, Although, what can you do to scout for this? I think, honestly, the best thing would be if his dragon is right in his opponent's face, or Draken didn't, I suppose, then you right. can sort of force them not to do the drop. But since he's forced all the way back home, even getting a Warden up front, anticipating possibly a few more Vultures, he's got no idea. Yeah, and honestly, the Vultures not being at the front to add more contesting and to distract your opponent, maybe snipe this Warden before it can actually go down, feels a little like a missed mm -hmm. opportunity. He even had this Mason over here to potentially repair them. So oh, if you're looking up. for ways to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop you can come along for the ride, yeah. All right, well, the Cyclops oh. are about to hit. The Treasury and uh, Quarry back at home are going to be just fine on the other side. And the reaction time not actually here for Three Crow. He's not even... Okay, he is pulling them now. Going to be going down to 14 workers, and the Cyclops will Ooh, be it's scooped not over. Up. It's not over. He's only got one Draken. Oh, he doesn't go for more attacks. Interesting. Well, he doesn't know how many Drakens his opponent has. Uh, oh, he's just stopped. He's, he's, he's just decided to hang out there, yeah. Because, so. yeah, look how clustered those got. If uh, Thriko was focused on microing his army, he could have eliminated, like, almost every scribe. Uh, but I think playing it safe is fine. He got a fair few kills there, so he's doing pretty well here. Uh, the second next is up. He flies back in. Oh, hang on, you didn't come back here yet? Uh-oh, he's still looking for more. Yeah, you know, oh and those God. Cyclops could get a couple of shots off onto these uh, scribes. A couple of them are already wounded, so there's the connections. What's the reaction? Ooh. Not going to be fast enough Ooh. to save more and more scribes. Yeah, with one dragon, you can't really take this down. He's going to get more and more. Okay, the scribe's dodging that explosion, which is really important. The primary oh, no, 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 like, oh. no, no, blind, hold me. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, it's, right, it's a disaster. Easy. It's over. Three scribes, it's over. Three scribes oh, for three crow, God. LMAO. GG. <laughs> well, uh, Newt's off to a flying start here, man. 
That yeah, was uh, quite literally flying, obviously, but just in ter terms of the pace, he uh, certainly cooked up something for a three crow to, to deal with. Yeah, making it look easy, man. Uh, three crow kind of helpless before that. Uh, yeah, and like right. I was saying, I think that's why you need to send your army to the opponent's face uh, right away to Fair force enough. them to keep those units at home, or you can just attack in and do counter damage of your own. Uh, but also, you got a question going for the Zealot and Purifier there. What purpose are they serving? If you're attacking into the enemy base, they're pretty good because you can just throw them into trade. But if you're at home, what are they doing for you? Dracodons would have served better. I guess the Purifier purifies? I'm not really sure, but that's just basically... Oh, God damn it. The leaky <laughs> oh my God. We're going to be going to Germination, speaking of purification. So let's see if Three Crow can bring the set back in his favor. We do have Three Crow in the top left, Newt in the bottom right. What do you think of Germination so far? I mean, I've been playing a lot of ZVP and ZVT because, you know, I play Zerg now. Um, I mean, I like being able to defend ramps with Hatcheros, as you know. That's uh, right. But there's a fine balance there of the fact that the fourth is going to be low ground unless you're extending really far away. So it's sort mm -hmm. of uh, evened out a little bit. I'm still not convinced in general of the idea that the third will be up the ramp like Citro style. I think it might be too easy to defend. Um, and also, in general, I think the middle of this map is very open, so you get to like the mid to late game stage. Uh, either you're defending the like high high ground three slash nine bases, or you're just kind of out in the open, and your opponent siege back in their base. Which again, a Zerg suits me quite well, because I think it's a strong strategy to get a lot of stack defense and go tier three. Uh, but TVP, I don't know. Um, you got to look at it and think it's pretty good for Terran because you can get you know even just bio on the ramps to defend Dracodons to get that third. Where normally you have to get something better to be able to actually defend a, an open space. Yeah, that's uh, right. But I don't know, Newt, not the kind of guy to stick with Bio or anything like that. He's throwing down the Fulcrum again. No big surprise there. No, he's, uh, he's definitely quoted as saying Bio is ass and he will not be playing it. So. Make me want to switch back to Terran just to show him the way. But so I know, I know. If the game goes long enough, we will be seeing the live cleric, no doubt. Uh, but on that note, I think it's quite difficult to attack up those ramps into the Protoss army as well. And things like Pariahs or Tectons, like you mentioned, could be very strong there. And even on the flip side, uh, the ramp is not really enough to protect you from Tectons either. So yeah. I feel like if 3 Crow gets into a powerful ground army in a relatively even game, the map is actually favoring Protoss a little. Yeah, it's just a question of, you know, can you stop the Terran from safely taking their third? On side try, I try to attenuate that a little bit by making it so that you had to you know, go a little bit wider between, like, the equivalent of this ramp out into the sort of right side of the map and this ramp right. out into that the bottom side. That is a big difference, right? Yeah, that there's, there's a lot more convinced. area on Sideshow to worry about. Um, and the fact that the third is so much closer to the natural and so much closer to, like, both ramps at the same time compared to Sideshow, I think makes that area a whole lot more defensible. Right. Oh. Legionnaire is having a bad day, man. <laughs> it's, it's getting spat on. I know, yeah. A little bit of a skill issue there, but uh, we do have a defensive warden for the drops. Now, Three Crow goes so heavily in reaction to what just happened to him in the last game in a way that can be good if you're up against an opponent that kind of always does the same strategy because you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do this thing, and then you're, my opponent won't be able to, to counter it, right? But it, as it turns out, Nude is going double star pad behind this. So. Yeah, so he's right but for the wrong reason. Um, you know, Nude is a fan of just getting a few... Rafes, uh, I'm of the opinion that if you go Rafes, you go all out or don't make any at all, or maybe one for scouting. But um, Newton likes to make just a few, get a few worker kills and sort of go back to it. But man, maybe he is listening to me throwing down triple star pad here. Triple star pad, only the ministry. This takes me back. That's <laughs> right. That's right. The yeah. only series winning against mystery meet happened like this. So it's pretty powerful. Uh, and if three is making all these zealots and legionnaires, they can't shoot up. I do feel like the biggest concern I would have here if I'm in three crows shoes is another star pad oriented opener that I'm not prepared for. And even if this was a drop play, I mean, that pylon is not defended from the right or that the top. That so. not adequately positioned. Yeah, uh, exactly. I feel like this is a bit of a rookie mistake. I mean, no offense to three crow, but you have to just suck it up and put it in the mineral line. Otherwise it's not going to have the coverage you need. With good magic box micro, you could easily be picking off scribes at the edge. Now I have to say from the games we played, uh, he's not really all about that. He doesn't do it very much or particularly effectively. So he mm. might not actually go for that, but I still feel like he's going to be able to abuse the uh, position of that pretty well. I would like to see a stockade though, because the shaman is uh, essential for this strategy. I think the anchor is definitely a good idea because when you're out there harassing, if the enemy army shows up, you need good defenses. Yeah, that's something that we really haven't seen too many people respond with actually is whether or not they, okay, I'm getting engaged at home and harassed at home by a bunch of air units in the early stages of the game. And you know, 
Terran versus Zerg in StarCraft 1, anybody, this should be kind of common knowledge. But <laughs> it doesn't seem like people have the idea to push out with a force that maybe on paper can't contend with the air units, but is eventually going to be able to threaten back at home. And say what you will about the Legionnaire, this number plus the Drakadans, they can make it through these anchors, the, the single anchor and all these vultures. Like, this is a very deadly situation if Three Crow goes across the map. So let's see what his reaction is as the Wraiths start to infiltrate. Yeah, and second Warden is going to be key here. It's going to be quite fortunate for him that he made that. He's going to get a couple worker kills. Um, oh, he's getting in his own way. position. He needs to watch out. Yeah, you don't want to be sandwiched between the Drakadans and the Warden here. Losing even a single Wraith is not a good thing. Okay, you can kill that Drakadan, but I don't think it's a good trade. doesn't even get it. Um, yeah, and you don't really want to be trading off race like that. You really just need to build up the count, and when you have like 20 plus, then it gets... Oh no, that's not a good position for that warden. Um, I know. When you have like 20 plus, then it gets extremely scary for Protoss, because you can like one-shot Drakonids and stuff. Um, but he's still still keeping the pressure on though, uh, and still, you know, producing more at home. He's got a lot of minerals, I assume we can need a Ministry or a Treasury go down in a minute. I would like to see a Ministry here, because he needs gas for his race. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. But uh, it looks like for now, he's just going to keep on. He does have the stockade coming, like you mentioned. And like I was pointing out, not magic boxing here, which I think is a mistake. Uh, when there's no splash damage at all, there's literally no reason not to do it. It's just stronger. Um, but of course, you do have to set up somewhere to trap a unit. Uh, so maybe not totally free to do it, but uh, I definitely think it's something you should do. It's some. It's like, you know, before you would use depots as a, as a Wraith player in StarCraft 1, and now... Well, I got triple at Wraith. Usually I'm walled off in my main against Zerg, so I just use... Oh, fair enough, yeah. Because yeah. Terran doesn't do it very often. Of course, Zerg has overlords. Yeah, I was thinking of, like, on Blitz Y, you'll see Terran pros be uh, putting a single depot trapped behind, like, a, or sorry, a, a Mason SCV trapped behind, like, well, a depot here and a depot here. You could do that is, with you your Star pads even... instead, you know? Well, you see me do it on Crossguard. <laughs> right. The thing is, you don't even have to try in Brood War. You'll have an SCV stuck somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, I'll just use that. Okay, he's still coming in here. No Warden's being made down at the natural. Really mistake there, I think. It's going to end with the Iver. Isolated Warden getting picked off a little bit. He does get it. Yeah, one Wraith going down in favor of it so far. Two, now three Scribes have hit the deck. This is a dangerous situation for Three Crow. He's going to be hemorrhaging more and more workers. Ooh. He still hasn't gone across the map with his big ground yeah, army. That Warden, man. That Warden that he built on the ramp is ruining this for him because it's blocking his Drakadins getting back in. Like, already the gateways were sort of blocking. So yeah, now the Drakadins right. really get stuck and go in the wrong way and all that. More and more Wraiths moving on forward. I still think, even at this stage, with all the mines and with the Anchor and with the Cyclops, you could move across the map with your Legionnaires and just force the Wraiths to stay home. Yeah, they'll pick really? off your yeah. Drakadins at this point, but you'll buy so much time to come back into the game and you'll shut down the expansion coming down here, which is gas-intensive with the quarry purchase. In my opinion, that's a pretty all-out move, though, because your army's going to get picked off, and then you come back home, and then what? Uh, he's still got the Wraiths. It's just a matter of time until they fly back in and start pressuring you again. The embassy finally going up. Going to get some wardens in better positions. I'd love to see an Engram. I know it's expensive, but that's the only way to really shut this down. Uh, oh, he's getting more scribes. Embassy now being tickled. There's a couple yeah, of Drakonids in the series. Lose. He needs to cancel that. Oh, no, he does back off. Interesting. You know, I think that would have been worth losing three Wraiths for, but uh, he does back off. Shaman now finally coming out for the healing. Oh, man, Legionnaires could have caught it. That. Yeah, it would have been huge. Uh, but alas, it's going to come across and add a lot more sustain for these wraiths, and this is where it gets really deadly. Um, I think it's already almost to the point where Nuke could actually overwhelm. I guess there's quite a few wardens around that you don't really want to fight. But yeah, the scribe production is still not continuing. Uh, he starts it from the embassy, but not from the natural, and still no wardens being made in the natural. Yeah, well, he doesn't really have that much money, Nublim. He's been trying to rebuild all of his workers. In fact, that's, well, that's what he's used his embassy for. In the main. That's right. <laughs> I have no sympathy if you don't have any money, man. Just didn't have any workers, that's why. Didn't make enough workers. More that's rates right. no moving what on through. In the game, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I was going to say about Engram, since the cloak change, right, it's a lot harder to deal than the race that was in uh, Ascension 7. Um, or Ascension 6, I should say. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Still... Still pretty uh, possible to split and take them out, but I mean, if your opponent's investing that much, you've got a couple of ones to back them up. It's just not going to be a good trade for Terry. Now, good position for the Drakens here, but if only there was a Witness. Even so, Newt still runs in, takes a few hits, but he's just going to heal again. The Witness needs to come down here, but not being made yet. No, Ancestral, Ancestral Archive's coming. I guess he's going for the Patriarch as a very solid response yeah. to this kind of strategy. Mystery Mead on uh, Nitro Valley had tried to field that against you when you pulled out the Wraith Surprise back yeah. in Ascension 6, so... I mean, it would have worked, but there just wasn't any time left in the game. But That's that right. Oh, and see, here's the problem. Now he really has built up. What was I saying? Once you get over 20, then the Drakadins just start falling like this. 
Uh, and Trico doesn't really have any recalls here. He's going to lose all these. He's going to be pushed back into his main. Now, he could potentially still try and play here for those ancestral units, but it looks like Newt doesn't want to wait. Oh, okay, no, he's going to go back. Well, with the Nexus starting to get tickled here and the Ancestral not even done, we are definitely going to see this Nexus end up falling. The Legionnaire is still not doing anything on the other side, and by this point, it's much too late for them to charge on in. Well, they are denying a third, I suppose, which is important. Well, these Dracons don't want to do this. They're <laughs> destroyed if they stay down there. Uh, yeah, Nuke could easily just go here. for it. It's kind of curious he doesn't. Well, I think a lot of his Wraiths are injured, but he could go and heal and then come back and do it. Oh, there goes the injured one. Yeah, there's yeah, a couple see, that are like orange health, but for the most part they're green. Uh, Protoss can sort of micro back and forth a little bit here, but yeah, he's, he's not saving this Nexus. Now, Ancestral must be done, but now it's an Obtecton. Um, Does 3 crow know those don't shoot up very well? Surely he knows. Is he just going to try to fight back all the Wraiths with his uh, Dracodons only? That's a curious well, idea. Well, actually, this is kind of a play, because at some point you're saying like, okay, I've done my damage and he must be preparing for Wraiths, so I'm going to stop making Wraiths, right? Mm. And then someone's like, wait, what do you mean you have four Obtectons? I've got Goliaths, so and then you die, right? But uh, alas, that's not what's happening yet. Uh, no, the Wraiths are still being made. More. I mean, three more just finished, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have thought about this, that even any, at any point in the game, having like 20 wraiths would be pretty good, as long as you don't just suddenly lose them to some big splash damage, and you're like, mm. oh shit, that's like, you know, 400 gas I just lost or something. Uh, but uh, it is difficult to keep the APM of a micro, though, so intensively throughout the whole game, especially when you hit tier 2, for like, oh no, all these legionnaires. They were not able to be pu become purifiers, unfortunately. Yeah, purified now, look at them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess huh. lasers are pretty pretty good at that. Now we have a Stargate coming. Finally, we're going to see that's, some air-based like splash. It. You know, the land effect can be a great choice here. You know, it's funny. The land effect's actually not that great against race, but it sure is better than Obtectons. I'll give it that. I, yeah, listen. I think if you can get, like, a couple of them split off and one of them charges forward with a disruption field, the sick micro could work out nicely. But that's theoretical Ooh. for now. Ancestral Archive's getting spotted out here. The Warden gets one frag, and now the Ancestral is oh, the main target. That. This game is so over. Dracon is here. Oh, and he starts fixing the warden. I wonder if he could have traded those all off for the Ancestral, but I don't know if that would have been quite worth it. Yeah, losing most of it. And then at the, I mean, he scouts that it's an Optecton, which is an odd Does choice the again. Does have more DPS than a Dracon against air, or is it less? I know the singular target is, is less. How fast does it fire? It's, uh, let's see. It's, uh, 1.3 on the cooldown, and yeah, it's, uh, it's not as fast as the Dracon for the fire. And it does less damage. Oh my gosh, small warden's falling. Well, the ground army is oh, starting to move on through. The Uptecton can start to pay for itself now, but the Nexus was never reestablished, and the land effect is only now being started. A couple well, of shots this is one of the echoing off. He can lose, though. If he overcommits oh, his no. and loses more, he knows. He knows what the juicy target is here. It's trying to run away, but it's too slow. No, he's running into the Goliaths. Oh, no. Oh. And now, yeah, if he loses all of his rates through. before the rest of the crowd even comes in, the land effect's not even going to be that useful. Yeah, it's not that good against Goliaths. Uh, he will just get shot down pretty quickly. Uh, but look how much he has. He's just overpowering here. Looking like he's going in for a pretty straightforward 3-0. That's what it looks like to me. Morden's finishing over here. Another Optecton finishing as well, but needs to actually start shooting. And 3-Crow hasn't actually ordered it to attack. Oh, oh he was typing. Well, right. Niblime, would you like to do the honors? Uh, yeah, that's GG. 3-0 for Newt. He's qualifying. I am not surprised. He's going all the way to the finals, man. Didn't drop a game in Gauntlet, but again, they have to play two series, to be fair. Shambler disagrees. Does Shambler think Wraiths are bad? Shambler just thinks that uh, if it's Shambler not... If it's not, if it's good versus him, it's bad, and if it's bad versus yeah, him, it's yeah. bad, you know? If he lost to it last game, it's it's too good. If you, yeah. if you wonder that it's bad, or something. Like that. Well, we're going to have, like, you know, the, the coaching discussion while this game ends. No, they don't. They're terrible. Okay, Fred Crow. Yeah. Fred Crow, please. That's... And the, I don't recommend the run effect, by the way, for anyone watching this. I don't think that's really the best option, actually. Well, if you scout triple star pad, which is quite the investment, you can go for, like, two Stargate land effect and just shut it down immediately. I still don't like that very much, because you're sort of giving Terran a little license there to do what they want. Because the land effects, yeah, they can help with disrupting weapons, but they're not great at attacking into fortified positions. Well... What I will say is that 
Three Crow gave it a good try. He looked okay in the first match. The second one, he got bamboozled by the drop. The third one got bamboozled by the Wraiths. Star pad play coming in for Newt as he shows a bit of a diverse game in that respect. And Top Ramen was even spectating that last match. Isn't that cute? So he got a little bit of a, nice. a preview of what Terran looks like when nice. played at a class one level, perhaps. But uh, I didn't hey. Even know he was in the Discord when that game was played. I know, yeah, that's kind of wild. So, all right, well, the, the bracket is now updated, and that means we are going to be seeing Three Crow head on down for a rematch against General Anakin for the lower qualification. That could be an interesting matchup because before they played and it, they thought it was a best of five, so they played five, uh, well, they played four games, General Anakin winning one. Uh, in actuality, it was a 2-0 because it was only a best of three at that stage. But the fact Ooh, that General Anakin that, took damn. a game versus Three Crow uh, in a, a pseudo best of five series, which they thought was live, means that that could be an interesting matchup in the lower qualification as well. But like you mentioned, Newt will be making it all the way to Battlements, and uh, it sounds like some people here think he'll be making it all the way to the finals, interestingly enough. So that could Dude, be if he doesn't for his group uh that means i was in it oh okay that's all i'm gonna say about that all right let's 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 hear about that a little bit more later on well in the blind that does bring us to a close for this upper qualification match we've got three more sets to go through so stay tuned for more of those throughout it and do you have any final words before we close out the video uh don't enough rights again please there it is all right well uh, i'll also say my final words are stop typing <laughs> <laughs>